So keep it locked. The Grow From Your Heart podcast starts now. Rasta Jeff, you bad motherfucker. All right, here we go. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rasta Jeff. This is episode 811 of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. In this episode, we're going to give away free seeds. We're also going to talk about flushing our plants before harvest. Is flushing real? Is flushing a myth? Is flushing bro science? We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Before we talk about flushing, I do want to remind you that everybody that participates in the Patreon campaign at the $25 level or higher in the month of August will receive a coupon for a free pack of seeds from Irie Direct. That's right. Join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash grow from your heart. Everybody that contributes to the $25 level or higher tier will receive a coupon code for free seeds at Irie Direct. Of course, you will have to pay the shipping on that free pack of seeds, but free seeds. For the month of August, I will be giving away a free pack of Jack Tripper, a 10-pack of Jack Tripper, to everybody who supports the Patreon campaign at the $25 level or higher. All right, let's jump into today's main topic of this podcast. Today's question came from the Grow Help tab on the Irie Genetics website. If you go to my website, iriegenetics.com, there is a row of tabs on the top. One of them does say grow help or grow questions. Click on that tab. Send me your grow question. If I read your grow question here on the podcast, you will win a free pack of Irie Genetics premium seeds. So if you've got a great question, please send it to me. There's a good chance I will read a good question here on the show. If I have not read your question, please do not feel discouraged. I've got a mountain of emails here in front of me. We are slowly working our way through them. I may get to your question in the next episode. It may be a couple of shows. Don't feel discouraged. Also, please do keep sending those questions, even though I've got a bunch. There are a lot of great questions that keep coming in. All right, let me stay focused. The person that sent me this question did not send me a name. Please do send me a real name and a shipping address, and I will happily send you a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds. You never know what you may get. It may be something new. It may be something old. It could be regular. It could be feminized. It could be unreleased. It could be something that's been sold out on the website that I discovered I had a couple of hidden somewhere. You never know what you may get as a prize for sending a question to the Grow Help tab. Anyway, send me your address because I do owe you a pack of seeds if you sent this message. This one goes just like this. It says, hey, Rasta Jeff, I got a pack of fist bump. Good choice, bro. Fist bump is a great cross. It says it came with a free five pack of Tangy Ripper. That is also a great cross. The Tangy Ripper is, of course, Platinum Tangy, the Platinum Tangy female, crossed to a Jack the Ripper male. It makes uh, super orange candy-flavored buds, uh, big pine cone, big donkey dick buds uh, that have some orange flavor with like a uh, lemon-lime background, sort of that terpenaline dryer sheet hint to it. Really, uh, really zesty-flavored bud, really nice head buzz, real social weed, real easy to grow flowers, in my opinion. Let me stay focused. It says, uh, these plants are in week six and it seems as if they may finish super late. All right, so you're in week six and it's looking like they may finish super late. Uh, most of those plants do go about nine, maybe 10 weeks, maybe 72 days. So you got a ways to go. I'm not sure what you consider super late. Some of my stuff, some of the plants I grow for myself go 14 weeks. So I'm not sure what some people consider super late, but you're correct. They may take you 72 days. Now here's where it gets interesting and fun. Here's where our question arrives. Is, it says, since you were the creator of this cultivar, when do you think I should start flushing these plants? I don't want to flush too early. Please give me some tips so I can be successful. Now, this is the part of the podcast where things are going to get very interesting. A long time ago, uh, I did a full episode about flushing our plants. I preached that we should, uh, let me talk about what I mean by flushing. Let's start there. What I'm referring to at this point in this episode, throughout this episode, when I say flushing right now, I am talking about usually uh, 10 to 14 days before harvest. I would preach to uh, water our plants with just water, with no nutrients, uh, in an attempt to clean out whatever the plants are in, if it's cocoa, if it's soil, soilless mix. Let's get rid of the excessive nutrients. If we've been feeding bottled nutrients, let's wash all that out of there so that the plant will then begin to cannibalize and starve itself so that there are no nutrients left in that plant so that when we cut it down, 
we don't taste nutrients in that plant. That's what I used to preach. It's what a lot of growers used to preach. That has been the idea, the philosophy, the school of thought for many, many years. Now, at this point in time, I'm not sure that if I agree or believe in the idea of flushing our plants. Um, I've got some notes here. I want to try to stick to them. Of course, I'm going to way freestyle off of that. But let me start. Uh, the notes say I'm still studying to determine if flushing is real. I'm not even sure if I believe that that's real. My notes say uh, you can flush the medium. You can starve the plant and it will cannibalize itself. But here's the question. What are you flushing out? I don't have the scientific or organic chemistry background to really explain this in a scientific way, but hear me out, go on this journey with me. Let's just say that you are going to eat me, okay? Nobody wants to eat me, but just come along with me for the ride. I'm gonna taste terrible, we already know that. But let's just say you were gonna eat me. If you ate me right now, do you think I would taste any differently if you poured, if you made me drink 100 gallons of water and piss a lot for a couple of days and then eat me, Am I going to taste any differently? I don't think so because all of the stuff that I've eaten over the past however many years I've been alive, however many days, however many meals I've had, that has created me. That has become skin, blood, teeth, hair, eyeballs, uh, fat that I've burned off, which the plant is creating using energy as well. I've used that to, it's the stuff that I ate are the building blocks that made me who I am and not who I am, but what I physically am. It created my physical being. The minimal amount of muscle that is here, that came from the things that I ate, my skeletal structure, my blood, everything that's all in here, this bag of meat that I am as a human, that's all from the food and the nutrients that I have consumed. It's all here, it's on me. I got a little extra right now uh, because it was a good winter. I ate a whole lot for the winter. I'm burning that off in the summer. But my comparison is what are we flushing out of these plants? The stuff that we, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, molybdenum, uh, sulfur, everything that we've put into these plants, the 16 elements which they have absorbed, have turned into plant. It is now a stem. It is now a vascular system within the plant. It is now branches. It is leaves. It is buds. It is chlorophyll. It is trichomes. It has become all of these other things. It has become, it has been metabolized into plant. So I'm not sure what we really, what I even thought we were flushing out of that plant. So I know that this could become a controversial episode. This could be a, a topic that stirs up a lot of controversy. Uh, by the way, get the comments going down there in the comment section. Please do type a long paragraph and let me know what you think about this. Am I crazy? Am I correct? Do you have any real science? Do you have some bro science? Do you have any thoughts, inputs, information, corrections, comments, concerns? Throw those right down there, down there in the YouTube comments. Let's see what you guys think. But I'm really... I don't know what we could possibly be flushing out. The plant takes up food, it turns it into buds, it turns it into leaves, chlorophyll, <clears throat> it turns it into all of the things that are required to be a happy living plant. It creates exudates, those exudates come out in the soil, the microbes interact with those, repeat process basically, uh, in a much, much more fancier form, that was the crude version, but I don't know what we could possibly be flushing out. It's not like the nutrients, the the CalMag, the nitrogen bottle, the phosphorus bottle, the bloom booster bottle that we fed the plant. It's not like we poured those into a can and they're still just existing there loose as bottled nutrients or even maybe into a little baggie and we got nitrogen and phosphorus molecules just hanging out in the bag. I don't think that's the way that it works. I think all of that stuff has been, however you want to put it, science terms, uh, bro science terms, it's been turned into digested, processed, metabolized, and it is now plant. It's not stuff you can flush out. I don't really think we can flush out the uh, nutrients and the things of the plant. You'd have to, it's not like a sponge. We can't just rinse it out. You can't just clean it out. I don't think it works that way. So uh, maybe that's a con controversial ramble. Maybe that's a controversial idea, but I don't know that flushing really does anything. So uh, if you don't believe me, if you want to argue with me, if you want to back me up, support me, I appreciate either one of those. I love free thinking human beings. That's a beautiful thing, but I challenge you in your garden, grow two plants, the same, the same everything, the same clone. Don't do it from seed, get a clone, have two clones, put them in the same type of soil, uh, put them um, not in the middle of the light, but off center of the light, both of them, one to the left, one to the right, to where they're getting basically equal amount of light. Feed them the exact same thing. 
uh, lollipop them, pop and twist them any way that you normally would. Do the exact same thing to both of these plants. Treat them like they are twin brother, twin sisters. Love them both exactly the same. Then here's where we're going to get scientific. Let's do this extreme so that we really see a difference. In case there is a difference, let's make sure we don't miss it. Let's flush one plant for 14 solid days. Let's excessively flush it maybe. Uh, in most cases, I consider a flush. A lot of you have the wrong idea on how to flush. Also, let me touch on that. A lot of people think that a flush is by completely overwatering that plant until all kinds of water is falling out of the bottom and you got a big mess of just runny, drippy plant with mud coming out of the bottom. That is not a flush. Uh, that's an overwater. You can do that if that's what you want to do, but that's an overwater in my opinion. An end of harvest or an end of flowering flush, a pre-harvest flush, is just water it until you get somewhere between 10 and 30% runoff. If you can pour in a gallon of water and get a quarter gallon of runoff out of your pot, uh, that would be perfect. That would be beautiful. That's an easy amount of water to dispose of, to manage. It's not going to be a big deal. You don't need to go run in 10 gallons of water through a three gallon pot at one time. What you want to do is water it till you get runoff. So now you've cleaned out that soil, then let it dry like you normally would. However long it normally takes, then repeat that process as many times as possible over a 14 day process. If you do flush, that's the way to do it. If you do choose to flush, that's the way that I recommend to do it. So take one plant, give it that 14 day flush process with just water. Uh, you can pH that water if you want. Don't pH it if you don't want to. That part doesn't matter to me. I've got a whole nother school of thought on that. Uh, we pH so that the plants will take up nutrients. We don't want them to take up nutrients, right? If you don't pH it, it's not going to take up nutrients. Why bother adjusting the pH at this time? That is my theory there. Uh, they're going to get the water that they need. They won't get more food if you are a flush person. So uh, do the flush phase to one plant and don't flush the other one. Mark them. If you're going to flush one and not flush the other one, put a little sticker or a little tag or something on the one you are flushing and the one you're not so that you don't mix that up. So once we've completed the flowering phase and we have done this flushing process on one and we have not flushed the other, what really matters to me the most, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. I've grown a lot of weed. I've smoked a lot of weed. I've been around a little bit. I've been in big rooms, little rooms. Uh, I participated in a lot of cultivating and a lot of cultivation, uh, allegedly. Um, I think that drying and curing is more important than flushing. The drying and curing phase is where we get rid of that chlorophyll. That's where the chlorophyll gets removed from the flowers in the dry and cure process. Uh, we seal it up. The anaerobes begin to eat the chlorophyll. We open it up. The chlorophyll gas is released. Uh, the, once again, that's the crude version. But that drying and curing process, in my opinion, is uh, more important than the flushing process. You can fix or completely ruin flowers in the dry and cure process. You can take a crop that was grown okay and you can make it pretty good by drying it properly. You can also take a crop that was grown superbly, perfectly, beautifully, every attention paid to every detail all the way up until harvest and you can ruin that shit in the first four to six hours of the dry and cure process or within the first week of the dry and cure process. Drying and curing is super important in my opinion, more important, more so than the flushing phase. So I'm still curious, I'm still skeptical if flushing is even necessary. Is flushing real? Is flushing a myth? Is flushing bro science? At this point, I kind of want to think that it's bro science. I don't see anything that supports it. So with all of that being said, if you do choose to flush your plants, that does happen in the final 10 to 14 days of your flowering phase. If the package of your seed says to go 77 days, start that 14 days before the 77th day. Let that 77th day finish. Then tomorrow, go in there and chop those plants down. Now, I do know that I said a lot of controversial things here in just a couple of quick minutes. Uh, I look forward to your questions, corrections, comments, and concerns. Uh, please do all of that down there in the comment section in YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, you can send me an email. The email address is growfromyourheart at hotmail.com. I truly do look forward to all of the feedback, whether it's hate mail, constructive criticism, whatever you've got to say, I look forward to the comments, questions, corrections, concerns. I have fun with all of that stuff. Keep it coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps and hoes, friends and foes, smokers, growers, clone cutters, pollen chuckers, all of you beautiful cannabis enthusiasts out there. I do want to thank each and every one of you for listening to another episode of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. I will be back in a few days with fresh new content. I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Robot Dave. And until next time, take a fat dab and give your mom a hug for me. 
Rasta Jeff, you bad motherfucker. Big up yourself every time, Rusty Jeff. 